All right, guys, welcome back to another Steam free-to-play walkthrough. Today we have Kyle's Famous by John Szymanski. I hope I said his name right. But uh, apparently this is supposed to be a comedy game that has 21 endings, and we're going to try to get them all. We'll see. Kyle wakes up. He is famous. More. Tell me more. Kyle is host of the most popular talk show in recent memory. Stay up late with Kyle. Okay. Stay up late with Kyle has grown in popularity quickly. In the last year, and the public has noticed, I read that completely wrong, Inside has called Kyle a most excellent dumpy white man. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Top Tech noted that Kyle is inspiring youth to explore STEM fields. I still don't know what STEM, STEM fields are. I, someone's told me before. Most other talk shows are dedicated to discussing Kyle and his personal details. Most online videos are best of clips taken from Kyle's latest broadcast. Dang, Kyle is quite the guy. The eye of the world is upon Kyle. Tonight is Kyle's most important guest interview yet. Stay up late with Kyle will be featuring Rachel May. She is a kind and lovely philan philanthropist. Philanthropist. She is dear to the hearts of many. This interview requires pre preparation. Kyle cracked his eyes open, knowing today is his last chance to prepare for the interview. Kyle has 30 hours left. He must choose his actions wisely. Did I read that correctly? It said the night before the interview and he's got 30 hours? Weird. Kyle's first decision of the morning was made wisely. Exit the bed or wither away. Let's exit the bed. Kyle exited his bed and took a quick glance around his bedroom. Let's... Open the closet. Kyle opened the closet. It was dark and he could really only see hanging, his hanging shirts. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit. Oh, we got 20... It took me three hours? Knowing how important appearance is. <laughs> Skunk pasties. Jeans are swimming... Slick suit. Let's go with normal slick suit. Kyle miraculously crammed his dumpy body into the suit. The chest pockets were filled with random knickknacks. Kyle returned to the center of the bedroom. Scavenge sit at desk. Sit at the desk. Kyle made his way over to the desk and sat down. Write notes for interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. Am I a mother? Is your mother a mother? Are you a mother? Let's go with that one. Kyle wrote down his second question. Ever eaten a raw egg whole? Beef mashed or blended? What are some diet tips? Kyle wrote down his third question. What's your funniest story? Do you ever smile? I purposely ran over a puppy. Okay, no. Time goes way too fast. Kyle wrote his last question. What's your guilty? Are you guilty? <laughs> okay. Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from his desk. All right, back to the desk. Checking desk drawer. Kyle opened up the side drawer on his desk and grabbed one of the items stored there. Small key. Kyle grabbed the small key he kept in his desk. Kyle made his way over to the, his desk and sat down. Why do I keep going back to the desk? Am I messing this up? Sort of change. Kyle scooped up the change. Is there anywhere else I can go? It always says back to the desk. Back to the room. Exit. Kyle walked into the small hallway that connects his apartment of his... <laughs> that connects the rooms of his apartment together. Check locked door. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the hallway, but found quickly that the door was locked from the inside. Force the door with forehead. Kyle decided it would be best to try to force the door open with the use of his face. After smashing his features into solid wood for several minutes, Kyle gained severe short-term amnesia. Kyle looked into the... Okay, let's leave the apartment, I guess. Kyle walked out into the middle of the road and took a long, pondering look around him. Uh... This is a tech store. Kyle walked into the clean white tech store. He was greeted by Techno Jim, an elaborate cutout mascot with flashing lights. Five batteries with change. 
Cal counted out a dollar ninety-eight in pennies and nickels and traded them for a small packet of batteries. Okay. Ask attendant for free samples. Kyle asked the store attendant whether or not they offered any free samples to important customers. The attendant gave Kyle a slight, a confused and slightly vacant look. Kyle began to beg for a free sample. Dot dot dot. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from the host chair was a glamorous woman with a gen air of genu, uh, genu. I don't know how to say that genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Approach Rachel. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded, forget her name from amnesia. Hello, um, you? Kyle's ears began to ring from concussion. Rachel looked at Kyle slightly confused, but continued smiling. Before she noticed the glazed look in Kyle's eyes, the producer approached. Time to get started, he said, putting a hand on Kyle's shoulder. Let's get stationed. Kyle sat in the nearest chair. Rachel, her seat stolen, sat in the host chair. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the camera clicked on. Start broadcast. Good morning, everyone, said Kyle. My name is, uh... <laughs> Kyle made a desperate effort to remember his name or really anything. Kyle looked at Rachel. Do you know who I am? <laughs> He asked. Rachel looked back confused. Who are you? Well, if you're not Kyle, I don't know who you are. Rachel smiled sweetly. Kyle made up his mind that he was probably Kyle. Well, um, he said, I, I am Kyle. A long silence followed. Eventually, Rachel spoke again. Um, and I'm Rachel. Hi, everyone. She waved. Hi, Rachel, said Kyle. So why are you here? <laughs> Rachel was visibly worried. Ha ha ha, funny, she said. Were you planning on asking me any questions? I mean, I don't have any ideas, said Kyle. We got a notepad. Kyle kept staring at Rachel. Someone clapped, coughed. Kyle looked around and noticed the crew. Who on earth are all of you? He asked. Nobody answered. Kyle got out of his chair and walked off frame, leaving Rachel alone with millions of viewers. Rachel started to attempt to entertain the audience herself. Eventually, the producer ended the broadcast early due to technical issues. Kyle woke up in his bed the next day, remembering nothing about what happened. The end. Kyle forgot everything, ending 1 out of 21. Reset. Okay, Kyle's first wither away. Kyle decided to w put and wither away. Kyle withered successfully and died. Shucks. Kyle's now a ghost. This does not relieve him of his responsibilities. Get out of bed anyways. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, Kyle exited his bed and took a quick glance around his bedroom. Opened the closet. It was dark and he could only see... Oh, suit of armor this time. Kyle was unsure of what exactly decided... What caused him to decide to wear his armor. But he, it felt like the right thing to do. After much squeezing and sweating, Kyle ma managed to wrap the metal suit around his dumpy self. I shouldn't be dumpy anymore. I should be a ghosty. Whatever. Scavenge. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for... bugs? Kyle started to pick up between the fuzz of his bedroom carpet, hoping to catch a stray beetle or two. That's weird. Soon he had a small handful of various insects dead and alive eat immediately Paul threw back his head and crammed the sticky wriggling mass into his mouth and he felt refreshed I'm a monster I have a ghost in a suit of armor that eats bugs alright interesting I like it I can dig it scavenge Kyle let's do some gossip Kyle firmly pressed his ear into the carpet hoping to hear some stray words from the neighbor below I heard Rachel May is going on a trip out of the country soon. Oh, girlfriend, tell me more. Well, what I will tell you is that every night I don a mask that looks like a bug and, fly, and fight misdoers. There was a stunned silence, and s then a door opened and someone exited the neighbor's apartment. Kyle returned to the center of his bedroom, sat at the desk, write notes for interview. Is your... Am I a mother? 
Beef Master Blended. Do you ever? I ran over. Uh, I'm a monster. I purposely ran over. <laughs> Are you guilty? I like that one the best. <laughs> okay. So we got gossip and other stuff. Uh, check in desk drawer. Small key. Back to desk. Back to room. We're out of time. All right. Kyle, hurry to the set. Per normal, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. What? Sitting across from the host. Chair was a glamorous woman with a air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded. Scream and spin in circles. Scream and spin in circles. Kyle started to stretch out his arms, tilted his neck arm upwards, as was interrupted by the producer telling him and Rachel that it was time to start the show, start the interview. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Gossip about neighbor. Good evening, everybody, said Kyle. My neighbor is a bug vigilante. With nothing more to say on the matter, he fell silent. Rachel also, on camera, stared at her hands and wondered when she was going to be introduced. The producer started cutting to different camera angles to break the tension. Kyle continued to remain silent and stare forward blankly. After several minutes, neighbor Gabby walked out onto the set. Hi, everyone, she said, smiling hollowingly, hollow, hollowly. My name is Gabby, and I am not a bug vigilante. False. Kyle looked at Gabby and then returned to staring forward. Gabby began to reply, but was interrupted by a bug-shaped intercom on her belt. Bug girl, it squawked. A robbery is on progress in, on East 3rd. Report immediate. Gabby threw the intercom on the crowd and crushed it under her foot. After a beat, she spoke again. Something has come up suddenly and I must go. Gabby left the set. Well said, Kyle. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for joining us, Rachel. Kyle got up, shook, shook Rachel's hands, and walked past the cameras, leaving her alone. Not knowing what else to do, the producer ended the broadcast. In the coming days, fans of both Rachel and Kyle dubbed the show as a masterpiece, a show as a masterpiece of television. Stay up late with Kyle online pages were updated to reflect this broadcast as the most popular ever. We did good. Kyle's producer later tried to have Rachel on the show again, but she was very, very, very busy. Kyle talked about Gabby ending. Reset. Alright, exit the bed. Oh, uh, let's get dressed. Skunk pasties. Kyle chose the pasties made out. Oh, that's gross. Made out mashed skunk flesh. I didn't really know what it was. Getting the slimy garments to stay proved difficult, so Kyle opted to stick them to his body with hot glue. Okay. Um,. Said desk. Checking desk drawer. Sort of change. Desk. Checking desk drawer. Oh crap. Why do I keep doing that? Small key. Back to desk. Back to room. Exit the bedroom hallway. Move to kitchen. Call walked into the center of the kitchen. Open fridge. Eat the fridge. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. Eat the fridge. Kyle pointed his neck directly upwards and hoisted the fridge on top of his face. Somehow, miraculously, he wrapped his mouth around the device he started to swallow. In one slow, horrible movement, the fridge slid down Kyle's throat. After many gurgles, pops, and snaps, Kyle felt relatively sure the fridge would not come back out. That was okay. Good job, us. Check pantry. Kyle walked to access the pantry, but found it was inside, was locked with a small keyhole. Unlock. The pantry door lock creaked as if it hadn't moved for years, but eventually it opened. Look at pantry. Instead of an assortment of canned goods and cranes, Kyle's pantry stored his massive amount of bottled lard. Why? Chug a bottle of lard. Kyle voraciously grabbed the closet 
closed his bottle, snapped the neck against the wall, and sucked out all the fat within a minute. Chug a large bottle. Kyle wildly sucked down another bottle. He felt very sick. Chug another one. Kyle's vomit and the lard were mixing in a way to make it hard to tell which was which. Finish it. Oh, I didn't have a tough time to finish it. Sitting across from the host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Okay, same thing. Kyle responded, answer politely. And I as well, Rachel, answered Kyle, extending his hand in greeting. You are a most welcome guest. Shake hands. After other mild exchange of pleasantries, Kyle and Rachel were prompted to take their places for the broadcast. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Introduce Rachel. Kyle vomited all of the horrible things he had eaten earlier onto the floor. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned, gave a couple coughs, and decided to play it cool and keep the show running. Kyle stopped, then vomited again, then continued with a shaky voice. <laughs> Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled at the w and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss, so we might as well dive right in, said Kyle. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. In a shock, Kyle realized he never had never bothered to prepare any notes for the interview. Knowing he had the eyes of millions upon him, Kyle came up with a solution quickly. Play dead. Kyle slumped in his seat and played dead. Kyle, what are you up to? asked Rachel, still smiling. Kyle did not respond and hoped nobody would ask questions. Kyle, why are you pretending to be dead? asked Rachel. I can see you breathing. Kyle held his breath. The producer whispered to Rachel over her earpiece. Give him a couple of slaps across the face and see if he wakes up. Lord Almighty, don't wake up, be strong. Rachel got up from her chair and walked to Kyle and slapped him firmly across the face. Rachel slapped Kyle continuously, trying to get him to stop play acting. Other members of the crew stepped into frame to start slapping Kyle as well. Soon Kyle was lost in the mass of people around him, all slapping his face with both hands. The slapping went on for many hours. Kyle did not wake up. Eventually, Kyle did not pretend to did not need to pretend to be unconscious. Kyle prepared by dying. That was a good one. I like that one a lot. All right, exit the bed. Uh, sit desk. Check in desk drawer. Small key. Back to desk. Check the desk drawer. Sort of change. Back to desk. Uh, back to room, exit hallway, move to kitchen, check pantry, unlock my small key, look in pantry, chuck a bottle of lard, oh I can grab it, grab the bottle of lard, for personal use, might need that, uh, return to hallway, leave apartment, does it tech store, buy batteries, all right, that's still Techno Jam too. We want him. Quickly before the attendant could acknowledge him, Kyle grabbed Techno Jim by the shoulders. Finding that Techno Jim's cardboard feet were bolted to the ground, Kyle started to pull up forcefully. After several tucks, Techno Jim broke free, leaving one foot and one leg behind. Kyle glanced at the attendant, who was staring bewildered, and ran outside. Continue with day. I have Techno Jim. Good. Visit down to Sarah's neighbor. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. She looked at Kyle unexpectedly. Deposit lard bottle. Kyle produced his bottle of lard, bit the glass neck off, and wordlessly dumped the contents onto Gabby. As sticky lumps of fat drooled off her face, Gab Gabby looked at Kyle expressionlessly. Expressionlessly. I think I keep getting to the end before I can do things. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Rachel's smile quickly turned to shock as she realized Kyle had not put on clothes that day. 
Cal waved and smiled broadly. Rachel uncomfortably averted her eyes. Kyle started making, it's even funnier because all the messed up stuff I just did butt ass naked. Kyle started making his rounds around the room, greeting each crew member, none of whom looked at him directly. As it became apparent that Kyle had no intention of leaving, Rachel made some excuses and they exited the set. One by one, the crew followed suit. Kyle was left all alone. Kyle prepared by being a nudist. Nice. Okay, so we need clothes. Open the closet. Use the outfit. Uh, jeans and swimming goggles. Next room. Uh, let's get the lard again. Said desk. Checking desk drawer. Small key. Back to desk. Uh, back to room. Back to hallway. Move to kitchen. Check pantry. Unlock a small key. Look in pantry. Grab a bottle of lard, back to kitchen, return to hallway, leave apartment, visit downstairs neighbor, Kyle approaches downstairs neighbor, deposit lard bottle, Kyle produces bottle of lard, oh I already did that. After a long minute of silence she spoke, can I help you Kyle? Gossip to Gabby. Oh my gosh did you <laughs> Gabby, did you hear that Rachel May is going out of the country soon? Screamed Kyle. With one smooth motion, <laughs> Gabby turned around and slapped Kyle with her lard infested hair. But suddenly she stopped in the doorway, her back creating a dark outline in the frame. Perhaps, Kyle, she said, it will be better when she's gone and the door shut. Kyle walked out into the middle of the road and took a long pondering look around him. Alright, that was weird. Zinc across, yeah, we've done that. Alright. After another mild ex uh, a moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good after good evening, everyone, and Kyle looked up at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who waved and, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. In response, Kyle collapsed on the floor. Why? From a combination of stressful preparation and not eating anything, Kyle had passed out. Nobody in the studio quite knew what to do with him. They began to poke in the back to see if it, he moved. After a while, they ended the broadcast, shut off the lights, and went home. Kyle was left face first on the floor. Kyle prepared by starving himself. Alright, we're at 5 out of 21. We're getting there. Sit the bed. Open the closet. Choose an outfit. Uh, skunk pasties. I feel like there should be a special one for that. Open the closet. Oh, I did that. Sit desk. Write notes for interview. Bop, bop, bop. And then we go and back to room. Oh no, I need a check and desk drawer. Small key. Back. Sorry. Um, exit bedroom. Move to kitchen. Open fridge. Make something to eat. Yeah, that's so gross. But we'll do it. Kyle started scraping the streaks of crud and spots of black mold off the walls of the fridge. After balling up the filth, oh my god, from the sides of the fridge, Kyle bit into a crusty moist ball. Several minutes of chewing, Kyle finished chewing the ball and swallowed the ball whole. Kyle walked back to the center of the kitchen. Unlock a small key, looking pantry. Chug the bottle of lard, chug a bottle, chug the bottle, finish off the pastry. I should have finished it. I didn't do that yet. More. I'll hurry to the set. Sitting across from the host was a glamorous woman, as normal. Let's go. Alright. Kyle vomited all the horrible things he had eaten earlier onto the floor. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned, gave a couple cops, and decided to play it cool and keep the show running. Kyle stopped and vomited again. 
Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel Ray, of Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who's waved, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss, so we might as well drive right in, say Kyle. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. Kyle produced the notes he had taken earlier. Um, is your mother a mother? So, said Kyle, my mother is my mother, my mother's mother is her mother, and my mother's mother. And many mothers have mother's mother's mother. Is your mother a mother? Kyle Rachel went to answer and stopped. I believe, she said, eventually that I should answer yes. <laughs> Kyle asked another question. Ever eaten a raw egg hole? Hey, Rachel, ever eaten a raw egg hole? Asked Kyle. Um, like shell and all? Asked Rachel. Kyle continued. I have. Like a lot. It's really bad, though, so I, sometimes I spit it back up. There was a silence. But actually, it gets easier the more you do it. Continued Kyle without losing momentum. So, don't start, I say. Rachel chose not to answer and looked in another direction. Kyle asked another question. I purpose... I purposely ran over a puppy. Hey, I ran over a puppy on purpose, said Kyle. Everyone in the studio froze. Kyle spread his hands out wide. It's a joke. He started laughing from the bottom of his stomach. <laughs> Nobody laughed with Kyle. Several minutes later, he stopped laughing and moved on. Are you guilty? Rachel, are you guilty? Kyle laughed through his questions on the floor, stood up and pointed at her. Rachel's eye twitched nervously, slightly. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? She smiled disingenuously. Guilty, spat Kyle, of your crimes. <laughs> Rachel did not answer. Uh-oh, this isn't good. Her eyelids both started twitching uncontrollably. After reading his final question, Kyle looked up from his paper. Well, Rachel, he said, I think that's all I was planning on asking you. If that's the case, Kyle, may I ask you something in return? I asked Rachel, smiling one more time. What on earth are you wearing? Are they made of skunks? Before Kyle could answer, the camera shut down and the broadcast was over. Kyle returned home, knowing the interview had gone well. But as he lay in bed and drifted to sleep, he felt perhaps something was still missing. Very well. Kyle prepared very well. Nice. Alright, so I gotta get food for sure. Reset. Doesn't matter what I eat, but I gotta eat. Choose an outfit. Suit of armor. More. Next room. Scavenge. What's resources? Kyle began to clump, comb through the damp piles of filth and mold on his floor in search of helpful items. It seems like there are more answers as I, after finding a few, eat, after finding and eating a bit. A few bits of crumbs and old cheese, Kyle found something much more important. Indeed, it was the corpse of Harry, a friend that had gone missing years ago while at Kyle's house. Kyle was glad to see him again, but was unsure of whether to interrupt such an important day with Harry business. Yeah, let's deal with Harry. What's up, Harry? Kyle hoisted Harry onto his shoulder and took him outside. Am I a murderer? Kyle began dragging Harry's body down the street, drawing many, many stairs. Kyle knew exactly where he needed to take Harry's horse, or Harry's corpse, on a lovely pay date, just the two of them. Kyle and Harry started at the arcade. Kyle used Harry's arms to operate the joysticks and push buttons. After five or six different games, the two friends had enough tickets for a single candy bar. They took their prize to the local park for eating. Kyle tried to feed some of the chocolate bar to Harry, but Harry seemed not to not have an appetite. After eating, Kyle noticed a nearby playground. He dragged Harry over. Kyle tried to figure out a way to swing Harry on the swing set, but lacking the ability to grip, Harry kept falling out. Instead, Kyle started to lug Harry to the top of the slide and shove him down time and time again. Finally, Kyle took Harry to the movies to see as many popular films as their pocket change allowed. Kyle quickly found that he had no pocket change, so he... Searched through Harry's corpse until he found his wallet. Kyle bought a t two tickets to a love romance. After getting inside, 
Kyle left Harry to go find a bath at the restroom. By the time Kyle had finished using the restroom, he had forgotten that he brought Harry along. Kyle watched the love romance by himself. Harry's corpse sat on a bench in the atrium. While Kyle was in the movie, a beautiful thing happened. Harry's corpse, imbued with the power of friendship and love, was reanimated. Harry's old rotten flesh gained color in his and life. His fingernails regrew. His missing eye came back. By the time the movie was over, Harry was able to greet Kyle with a large, friendly hug as his old self. Kyle was confused but delighted that his long-lost friend some met him on his way out of the theater. The two made plans to get drinks together and parted ways for the day. Kyle returned home, forgetting about the interview with Rachel. Kyle helped a friend. I'm so confused what just happened. Exit the bed. What if I had money for pocket change? Let's try that. Check in desk drawer. Sort of change. Back to desk. Back to room. Scavenge. Resources. Deal with Harry. Oh, that's the same regardless. Okay, cool. That was nice. At least we brought Harry back to life. 7 out of 20. One third of the way there. Um, exit the bed. Open the closet. We need clothes. Choose an outfit. Jeans and swimming goggles is fine. Sit at desk. Um, check in desk drawer. Flashlight. Back to desk, in desk drawer, small key, I don't need that, sort of change, back to desk, okay, back to room, scavenge, bugs, more, save for later use, back to bedroom, there's a bedroom to hallway, move to kitchen, open fridge, eat condiments. Kyle started to grab condiments and squirting them into his mouth with both hands. The rate at which ketchup, soy, and other sauces overrode his ability to swallow. Kyle spewed the ex excess condiments all over the kitchen, covering the furniture and the walls. Kyle continued all until all the cabinets had been emptied. Turn the hallway. Leave apartment. Oh, I can't do it in time. I keep getting sidetracked. Ah! Sitting across from the host chair was a glamorous Roman. Rachel smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, blah, 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 answer politely, shake hands, more, start broadcast. All right. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. Shock realized he never bought notes for the interview. Uh, produce ball of bugs. Uh, knowing he had the eyes. Yeah, let's do it. Well, Rachel said Kyle, I wanted to show you this to you. Kyle produced the ball of bugs he had accumulated from his bedroom floor. Rachel took several beats to figure out what Kyle was holding in his hand. A look of horror crossed her face. Kyle, what on earth is that? She asked. Is it alive? Uh, maybe, said Kyle. Here, watch this. Kyle, staring at Rachel, opened his mouth wide and slowly inserted the gooey ball of dogs. As Kyle, Rachel watched, obviously unsettled, Kyle began to chew very slowly and intently. Attempting to swallow, Kyle coughed several times, covering Rachel in partially chewed bugs. Rachel sat, and sat sock still, processing what had happened. Kyle finished swallowing and opened his mouth to show that there were no bugs left. Well, that was satisfying, he said, smiling widely at the camera. Rachel got out of her seat and left the studio. Kyle prepared by eating bugs. Reset. Open the closet. Oh, my bad. Check dress drawer. Small key. Check the desk. Make the room, exit bedroom in the hallway, move to kitchen, open, check pantry, 
Lock with small key, looking pantry. Chug a bottle of lard. Chug a bottle of lard. Chug a bottle of lard. Finish off the pantry. Kyle finished the last bottle of lard. He felt a wave of accomplishment come over him. Uh, open fridge. Eat fridge. I don't like those noises at all. All right. Answer politely. Kyle vomited up all the horrible things he had eaten earlier on to the floor. Rachel looked at Kyle concerned, gave a couple of coughs, and decided to play it cool so she keep running. Kyle stopped and vomited again. Tonight I have the pleasure of Kyle motioned to Rachel who smiled. Hello, I'm Kyle, she said. Well, alright, uh, same thing it seems. Alright, blame Rachel. Uh, Rachel, I need to be honest. You're not terribly interesting, and I could not think of what I should ask you. In fact, continue Kyle, I would rather, would far rather interview a fish than I would you. Furthermore, furthermore, said Kyle, I'm not sure I could tell you the difference between you and a fish. Kyle leaned back in his chair and desperately hoped the blame had been shifted adequately. Rachel glowered at Kyle. Kyle glowered back. Rachel left the studio. Kyle no longer had a guest and spent the next 42 minutes staring at the camera silently. Kyle prepared by blaming others. Return to menu. Endings. We're missing quite a few. Start. Kyle wakes up. He is fam skip. Exit the bed. Alright, let's see. We have... There's got to be something to do with the flashlight. I don't know what it is, though. Sort of change. Back to desk. Uh, checking desk drawer. Flashlight. Back to desk. Back to room. Uh, we need to eat breakfast for sure. Turn to bedroom. No, my bad. Ah. Oh. Come to kitchen. Open fridge. Prepare breakfast. Eat. That's such an annoying noise. Oh my god. <laughs> Bye batteries. Turn the flashlight. Text shop. Ask attendant for free samples. Wanting Kyle to leave, the attendant grabbed a decrepit phone meant for spare parts and held it out. Grab with teeth. Kyle firmly clapped his mouth around the outstretched phone, creating several teeth holes in the screen. Kyle grunted and yacked with his head until the <laughs> attendant let go of the phone. The phone is now Kyle's to use forever. Give review of... I want to do this. This phone, said Kyle, is several years old and has cable... Oh, we gotta do that again. Gosh. Oh god, I knew this thing again. Okay. I thought I'd put on... I don't know. Oh, browse social media. I have a phone. Kyle started to scroll through news articles on his phone. Stay up late with Kyle, ranked number one and number two show on television. Read more. New East Bridge being constructed after being found to not actually exist. Authorities are investigating. Read more. Another grand larceny in crime spree streak. Evidence points to a perpetrator fleeing the country. Rachel made to unexpectedly leave the country on a very, very long vacation after interview tonight. Who is the bug vigilante? Recently spotted pursuing larcenists. Kyle fails to show up to several charity events. Oops. Bugs Vigilante shows up to charity events with fresh baked pastries. pastries. Donations flourish. Hot dogs make resurgent as both sources for both humans and tugboats. Phone model recall. Techno Gem store blames overuse by customers. Kyle's phone exploded in his hands from overuse. Oh, damn it. Uh, open closet. Use an outfit. Do armor. Or 
Back to room. Exit to bedroom hallway. Move to kitchen. Open fridge. Prepare breakfast. Eat breakfast. Return to kitchen. Turn to hallway. Turn to bedroom. Um, sit at desk. Write notes for interview. Are you a mother? Beef master blended. You ever smile? Are you guilty? Okay. Back to desk. Back to room. Okay. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from the blah 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 blah. Answer politely. Are you a mother? Kyle produced the notes he had taken from earlier. Rachel, I and many others would love to know, are you a mother? Kyle looked up from his notes. Well, being a single woman with a career, she answered, that's not something that has crossed my mind. Rachel smiled genuinely at Kyle. Very reasonable indeed, said Kyle. He referenced his paper out of question, paper of questions. Kyle asked another question. Beef mashed or blended? A burning question from the fans, said Kyle. Beef, do you prefer mashed or blended? Rachel answered quickly and honestly, mashed. And no more was said of the matter. Do you ever smile? Like seriously, Kyle spat his question out viciously. Rachel stopped smiling. If you're on going to be on the show, you need to smile, okay, said Kyle, not smiling. <laughs> you're here to get views, and you'll get more... Excuse me. And you'll get more views if you smile. Here, I'll show you how. Kyle turned to the camera and gave the audience a huge teeth clenched bug eye grimace. Rachel nodded and obviously wanted to move on. Kyle asked another question. Are you guilty? Rachel, are you guilty? Kyle threw his question on the floor, stood up and pointed at her. Kyle's eyes twitched nervously. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? She smiled in disingenuously. Guilty, spat Kyle, of your crimes. Rachel did not answer. Her eyelids both t started twitching uncontrollably. Call the police. Kyle pulled out his phone and dialed the police. Hello, police, said Kyle. I believe I found a criminal. Rachel began to run towards the exit on her way. She swatted Kyle's phone out of his hand. Tripper! Kyle stuck out his leg. Rachel stumbled and crashed to the floor. But in a moment, she was on her feet. She drew a blunt weapon, seemingly out of thin air, and started swinging at Kyle. Before Kyle had a chance to react, a figure burst through the roof and blocked Rachel's attack. It was a middle-aged woman in a bug-shaped mask. She was brandishing a bug-shaped stick. The woman began to fight with Rachel, flicking her weapon back and forth with surprising speed. Rachel tried to fight back, but it was no obvious she was no match for the interceptor. With one quick move, the bug vigilante drew her foot high above her head and drove it straight onto Rachel's hand. The weapon clattered to the floor. Rachel attempted to run again, but was met with a stick to her legs. She fell at the feet of a police officer just arriving from Kyle's car. Rachel was charged with seven cases of grand larceny. After her first month in jail, Rachel started a reality TV show filmed in her cell about prison cooking. The show gained immense popularity, and somehow the public began to love Rachel all the more. What is she freaking, uh, what's that lady's name that was on Snoop Dogg's cooking? Martha Stewart. Kyle made guest appearances on Rachel's show many times. The identity of the bug vigilante was never known. She remained a mysterious but important part of local law enforcement. Rachel started a new show. That was a cool one. I like that one a lot. Move to kitchen. Uh... Yeah, let's eat. Open fridge. Our breakfast. Eat. Turn the hallway. Leave apartment. There's a tech store. Still techno gem. All right, let's talk to Gabby. Ask Gabby about Kyle. Good morning, neighbor. Said Kyle cheerfully. Gabby looked at Kyle expectantly. Gabby, Kyle asked very earnestly, how do you feel about me? 
The dubious expectation of Gabby's face transformed into consternation. Even the worst of men are given grace, Kyle, she replied, though they don't deserve it. As she finished her sentence, she gently pushed Kyle away and shut the door. Kyle walked out into the middle of the park road and looked, take a look. Whatever. Leave apartment. Return to apartment. That's all I got. Huh. Interview Techno Gym instead. Kyle roughly shoved Rachel out of her seat and placed Techno Gym in her stead. Hello, Techno Gym, said Kyle. I'm going to interview you today. Kyle grasped Techno Gym and tried to shake it. Jim's hand and tried to shake it, but it instead tore it off the cardboard frame. Kyle's producer, sensing viral media, pulled the bewildered Rachel out of frame and motioned to the crew to go live. Cameraman moved, lights flashed, and suddenly the studio was on air. Hi, I'm Kyle, said Kyle, and I'm going to, and tonight I'm going to interview a very special guest. He pointed at Techno Jim using his, the dismembered arm. Techno Jim started to smoke from the heat of the lights. Would you like to introduce yourself, asked Kyle. Knowing Jim would probably not speak, Kyle took it upon himself to be his voice as well. Hi, Kyle, he said, raising his pitch of his voice. My name is Rachel May, and I'm a very special guest. Rachel's expression of confusion turned to shock. Well, Rachel, you look way too thin and absolutely terrible, and you should feel ugly. Kyle gave Jim a meaningful stare. Wow, Kyle, he said. I sure wish I could look like you. Techno Jim burst into flames. Instantaneously, the sprinkler system initiated. Curtains of water per poured down from the rafters. Within seconds, the production's equipment was doused in water. The set was soon aburst with electrical fires. Kyle's crew abandoned their posts as cameramen and sound mixers to try to put the fires out. As the crew scrambled, scrambled around, the cameras continued to run. Kyle sat motionless, staring forward. Eventually, the fires were all put out. Kyle's producers shut off the broadcast, leaving Kyle's vacant stare as the final frame. Kyle's ratings skyrocketed. Techno Gem became a staple of the show, often ending up destroyed by the end of each episode. Although Rachel did not come back on her on the show, her cardboard portrayal did. Rachel was very popular. Interviewed Rachel. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. All right, we start again. Thanks to the bed. I'm in the closet. She's an outfit. It's like a suit. We're back. Alright, back to room. Alright. Actually, back to bedroom. Um, hallway, move to kitchen, open fridge, prepare breakfast, eat breakfast. Turn to hallway, leave apartment. Visit downstairs neighbor, more green start conversation. Ask Gabby about Rachel. Gabby Kyle said, what are your true thoughts about Rachel May? Oh, Rachel, Gabby said, she's a wonderful woman. Her generous acts have inspired more good work than bad. Gabby trailed off, not meeting Kyle's eyes. After uncomfortable minus of silence, Kyle turned around and left. This is a tech store. All right, let's just tell them that this thing sucks. All right. Answer politely. All right, let's do this. No questions, uh, run away. Kyle ejected from the seat and ran out of the studio as quickly as possible. 
All right. After it became apparent that Kyle was not coming back, the producer ended the episode and everyone went home. Kyle prepared by running away. That's a good one. Uh, exit the bed. Other way. Shucks. Yeah, I'll bet anyways. I'm in the closet. Here's an outfit. Suit of armor. Set desk. Uh, checking desk drawer. Sword of change. Back to desk. Checking desk drawer. Flashlight. Back to desk. Back to room. Exit bedroom. Move to kitchen. Oh, can I go through the door now? Prepare breakfast. Eat breakfast. Return to kitchen. In the hallway. Check the locked door. Float through as a ghost. Yes. Kyle used his ghostly powers to walk straight through the door. Go inside. Kyle found himself in a room. He stashed various items and sent to him by fans. Check supernatural artifact. This is one of the mis many mysterious artifacts Kyle has been sent over the years. Smash it. Kyle began po pounding the mysterious artifact with both fists. Within a few hours, it became dust. An ancient force trapped in the artifact is released and turned Kyle into a lizard demon. Kyle found himself in the room. He stashed the various items sent to him by his fans. Alright, well... Kyle hurried to the set. Per normal, this, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. Sitting across from him was a, as Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Rachel's smile turned to horror as she realized she was not looking at a human but a lizard demon. Pandemonium ensued. Scripts went flying. Crew members ran in all directions. Lights were knocked over. Kyle watched the chaos around him. His lizard demon form enveloped his last shred of humanity. Kyle grew to a massive size. Within several moments, he had demolished an LMT set. A local force of five spunky teenagers in brightly colored apparel arrived at the scene to fight Kyle. As the teenagers swung at him at, with their spunky individualized weapons, Kyle pushed them over with his foot. Kyle's rampage of his, this, his studio ruins continued, but in another part of the city, a hero was rising up. In the dusty apartment on the top floor of an old skyscraper, the oldest part of the town sat a large man named Frank. Few people knew in the world that Frank existed. Fewer knew his name. Frank was watching the local news. A story about the studio rampage was playing. Quickly, Frank got up from his chair. He opened a small door hidden behind a poster on his wall. Inside was an unbelievable mound of fat-ridden foods, unrefrigerated and fairly rotten. Frank began to consume the mound at a frightening rate. His body began to puff. Frank expanded faster and faster within moments. Within e with each minute, his he burst through the roof. Within minutes, Frank was a towering behemoth. He rolled across the city, rebounding off the buildings and getting cheers from onlookers below. Approaching Kyle, Frank gave a long, painful heave upwards to into the sky. To Kyle, the sky turned black. He looked upwards to see the monstrous figure hurtling towards him. And in a moment, Kyle was in completely enveloped in rubbery fat, unable to move or make a noise. Frank was quite tired and passed out where he lay. Several years went by as Frank slumbered. As Kyle was held in Frank's warm, fatty embrace, his humanity began to return. When the first winter came, Frank's body recycled his fat. For resources over many months, he shrank in size. Eventually, Kyle was human and Frank was thin. They both walked away from the scene as new men. Neither realized how much time had passed. Kyle prepared by being a lizard. Oh, we're making it, baby. 13 on 21. Wither away. Shucks. Yeah, I'll bet anyways. Open the closet. Choose an outfit. Slick suit. Room. Here's the bedroom hallway. Uh, check lock door. Float through as a ghost. Go inside. Uh, check supernatural artifact. Grab artifact. Sash is the mysterious artifact for later use. Uh, check the sewing machine. Kyle walked over to the dilapidated sewing machine. The box was only half removed. What? Get laser claymore. Expecting a battle, Kyle grabbed the laser claymore. Oh. 
Float through side door. Uh, let's do this. Oh, I know what I should have done. Uh, let's go eat something real quick just to see if we get a different thing. Move to kitchen. Open fridge. For breakfast, eat breakfast. Turn the hallway. Leave apartment. Visit downstairs neighbor, more. Throw artifact to Rachel. As he, she approached to shake his hand, Kyle produced a supernatural artifact and winged it at Rachel's face. Within moments of the artifact colliding with her head, Rachel started to turn into a lizard demon. Rachel began to cause destruction, tipping over lights, and causing crew members to scatter. Kyle, realizing the danger, the disaster he had caused, decided it was up to him to taste the monster, tame the monster, throw crew members at her. Kyle started to grab nearby crew members and hurled them at Rachel. The crew members rebounded off of Rachel on all sides, causing little to no damage to her or her themselves. In a lizard demon, lizard demon rage, Rachel rushed at Kyle and drove him into the opposite wall face first. She began to pound Kyle's face into the wall repeatedly, littering it with head-sized holes. Kyle, having been in this situation before, felt he knew exactly what to do. Balling his fist, Kyle began to punch himself in the stomach repeatedly, causing loud gurgles and pops. Kyle's strategy did not help. He continued to be mashed into the wall. After a period of time, the artifact lodged in Rachel's face came loose and fell onto the floor. Rachel immediately returned into her normal self, normal human self. The studio now in shambles flicked to life. The broadcast has started automatically. Kyle, unable to be move properly, became aware that the eyes of many were upon him. Kyle tried to address the audience, but instead spewed some mixture of breakfast flame and chunks of wall. Kyle's spewing video became a very hot meme. Online personalities used it to express distaste about social issues. Teenagers sent it to each about homework amounts. Rachel's broadcast was rescheduled for the following week. Fans complained about not being able to see Rachel's face as she wore protective headgear the entire time. Rachel prepared by being, by being a lizard. So desk. Hang in desk drawer. Sort of change. Back to desk. The desk. Check desk drawer. Flashlight. Back to desk. Back to room. Exit bedroom hallway. Leave apartment. There's a tech store. Flashlight. Turn street, uh, return to the apartment, <coughs> excuse me, turn the bedroom, open the closet, spec with flashlight, take box for later, Time travel with Rachel. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle. Tonight, Rachel and I will time travel together. In one moment motion, Kyle grabbed Rachel's arm and pressed the red button on the time machine with his elbow. Kyle and Rachel were sent back to a time before human existence on Earth. They were standing, they were standing next to a large lake. There was a forest behind them full of singing birds. Lizards were everywhere. Kyle, dear, said Rachel, stern but not angry. You can't just do things like that. Rachel began digging in the dirt, looking for small, smooth stones. I'm sorry, Rachel, said Kyle. I think I got a bit ahead of myself. Kyle began helping to look for stone. Well, it's okay, Kyle. I forgive you. Rachel took Kyle's stones and started to build a small stack on the ground. Kyle silently began sifting through the sand near the lake to find pure mud. Well, since we're here together, said Kyle, using nearby sticks to build a pyramid around the rocks. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, said Kyle, sticking pieces of shale together with the mud. I've been preparing for your interview all day. 
Rachel began to bundle nearby foliage into the smallest power cells. Do you love being famous, she asked. Kyle used bones from the dead fish ashore to start crafting some energy capacitors. That's an interesting question, Rachel, he answered. There's ups and downs. How about yourself? I think I'd love to be an unknown with a loving family, said Rachel. Being so recognizable gets lonely. Rachel starts grabbing live birds as they flew by to make our nuclear reactor. That's how this works. I understand that incredibly well, said Kyle, extracting pure hydrogen from the lake using a reed siphon. There was a warm understanding silence between them. After a few moments, Kyle broke the silence. Can you pass me the arc welder when you're done? I need to weld these bioreactive plates together. Soon the pair had constructed a janky but workable return time machine. As they climbed in, Rachel and Kyle looked at each other. Both knew that they had bonded. With the flick of a switch, the whir of the engine made out of beaver pellet and some pops, and the duo returned home. Later that evening, back at his apartment, Kyle thought about the time he had spent with Rachel. He was glad they had gotten the chance to take a trip together. Kyle and Rachel took a trip. Look at this real quick. Dang, I still have- there's two time travels? Okay. Try that again. Alright, back to room, open closet, there's an outfit. Back to room. Move to kitchen, open fridge, prepare breakfast, eat breakfast. It's so difficult, aggravated. Are you guilty? Let her go. Rachel disappeared out the door, never to be seen again. In the coming days, the grand larcenies had been plaguing the city stopped. Kyle was credited with exposing Rachel's crime spree, but nobody remembered in a couple weeks. A month later, in the European city that Rachel had planned her vac vacation to, crime rates skyrocketed. Ending unlocked. 60 out of 21, Kyle solved a crime. Arr. Alright, I'm back. I'm gonna see if I can get to the rest of the endings to this game. <coughs> I had to take a nap because... Oh, apparently I'm breaking everything. No, get out of here, Dragon Center. Don't want you. Um, but yeah, I kept doing the same ending, so I was like, I'll take a break. Come back to it, baby. <laughs> Choose something different. Alright. What if... I take Techno Gym and go back in time? Let's try that. Exit bed. Sit desk, check and desk drawer, flashlight, check and desk drawer, sort of change, back to desk, back to room, exit bedroom, leave apartment, visit tech store, buy batteries of change, back to tech shop, take Jim, come with me, Jim, we're going. Continue with day. Turn to apartment. Turn to bedroom. And then we open the closet, inspect with flashlight. Alright, what if I travel time? Use Techno Gym to upgrade! Thank goodness we did it! Kyle pulled out the electronics from Techno Gym's eyes and fingers and started shoving them into the box. The box began to rattle, imbued with the power of the important technology found on Techno Gym. Suddenly, with a fizz and a pop, a pop and a fizz, J Kyle found himself taken back to the 19th century Europe. Kyle was riding inside a of a horse-drawn carriage. He was surrounded by poofy dresses and shocked faces. Every face was stone-cold, made of copper, and definitely a robot. 
Kyle had found himself in Robo Europe. The gathered Robo denizens' heads started spinning and shooting out alarm lasers from their mouth and ears. Kyle reacted quickly. Is there multiple endings here? Consume the lasers for power. Kyle quickly started to consume all of the lasers. Every laser he swallowed gave him more power. Soon, Kyle bloated up and just kind of fart exploded lasers all over the place. The force of the explosion pushed all beings, metal and not, out of the carriage with great velocity. Kyle landed in a nearby field on his head and immediately lost consciousness. While Kyle was asleep, the robot citizens plugged a, his body into a generator linked to their main power grid. Having energy sucked from his body kept Kyle in a pseudo-cryogenic state, keeping him unconscious and preserved. Robo-scientists began to use Kyle's energy production as a center of study, launching the robot's world into a golden age. Kyle started to power all the technology, technological advancements of the robot world. Wars began to center around control of Kyle. Kyle was deemed as the most important discovery of the modern ro ro world. After humans took over the ancient robots, robot civilizations, Kyle was mummified by the ancient Egyptians. Kyle was stolen from a museum in the early 1800s. He was attempted to be smuggled across the Atlantic but sank. Scientists uncovered him encased in ice in the Antarctic and shipped him by a helicopter for study. On the way, Kyle was accidentally shoved out of the helicopter. He crash landed through the roof onto his bed in his apartment. Onto the bed in his apartment. After several days of lying unconscious in bed, Kyle began to stir. Ended up in bed achievement. Okay, what if I take the sword? Alright, there's gotta be something with the lard now. Let's get some clothes on. Um she's an outfit, suit of armor, more. Back to room. Said desk, checking desk drawer, small key, back to desk, back to room, exit bedroom hallway, uh, move to kitchen, check pantry, unlock a small key, look in pantry, take bottle of lard, back to room, um, open fridge, probably need to eat. I hate that noise. God, I hate that noise. <laughs> uh, what else do we need to do? I guess we could write some notes, maybe. Bedroom. Uh, set desk. Write notes. My mother. Deep master blended. Do you ever smile? Are you guilty? Alright, let's go to our thing. Alright. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from him. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking at him. Kyle responded, scream and spin in circles. It's my ultimate ability. <laughs> Alright, we've already read this. Drink lard. Dive right into the bottle. This bottle, that is. Kyle pulled out the, his bottle of lard, bit the top off, and chugged it. Kyle's body rejected the lard. He began to spew chunks of lard and digestive fluid in every direction. Everything within a 10 feet radius was immediately covered in creeling Rachel. Kyle continued to vomit. Rachel bravely sat, fought to stay seated amidst the vomit, hoping to save the show from disaster. Unfortunately, Kyle's vomit had covered all of the cameras. There was no broadcast. Kyle finished the spewing eventually. The broadcast was not recoverable. All present were sent home to try again another day. As Kyle got home, he made a mental note to refill his large supply. Consumed. Alright, so now we're missing three. We're getting there. God! Alright, what do I gotta do now? Skip. Wither away. Um. Come on, baller. Burning. Burning! Scavenge. We need bugs. Save for later use. Back to bedroom. Open the closet. Choose an outfit. Suit of armor. Alright. Check lock door. Ah! <laughs> Kyle walked over to the dilapidated sewing machine. Its box was only half removed. Sew bug puppets. Kyle starts sewing dead bugs together to make actual, small actuated finger puppets. 
Kyle crafted a bug puppet for each finger. He named them after guests he had interviewed on his show. Alright, that should be good enough. Um, move to kitchen, open fridge, prepare breakfast, eat. Oh my god, why? Why does it have to have that annoying noise? All right, Kyle hurried to the set. Poor normal, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. Sitting across from the host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuity. genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded, answer politely. You're a most welcome guest. Reduce bug puppets. Kyle slipped his bug puppets onto his fingers. Hello, everybody, he said, wiggling the puppets he had named after himself. I'm Kyle. <laughs> and I'm Rachel, Kyle screamed, wiggling a different finger. You're so much better than me. I know, Rachel. Kyle wiggled. He looked meanfully at the human Rachel. Oh, 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 said one of Kyle's other puppets. I'm super fat, and you Kyle interviewed me last week. And I'm super irritating, said another finger, and not very attractive. Rachel stared at Kyle, incredibly disoriented. Kyle, she said, what are those puppets made out of? Kyle thrust both hands at Rachel's face, puppets pointed at her eyes. We are puppets, Rachel, he said, scratching his fingers up and down. We're real people. That's terrifying. Rachel plucked the puppet that Kyle had said was her finger. Her off his finger. Kyle, she exclaimed, this is several dead bugs patched together. Accept us, Rachel, said Kyle, scrunching. We need acceptance. That's terrifying. Rachel exited her chair and walked out of frame. In a moment, she returned with the bag. She plucked each pup off Kyle's fingers and tossed them in the bag. Kyle, leave the bugs alone next time, she said. Rachel left the frame again, bringing the bags of puppets along with her. So Kyle suddenly by himself was unsure what to do. After a few minutes of hemming and hawing, Kyle resorted to telling jokes of for the remainder of the broadcast. Fans did not notice much difference between this and previous episodes. An average episode. Alright, that's two, two left. The hardest ones. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna try this first. Open closet, choose an outfit, slick suit, back to room, sit at desk, write notes for interview. Are you guilty? Back to desk, back to room, exit bedroom to hallway, move to kitchen, open fridge, try breakfast, eat. I don't know what smack. Oh, I hate that noise, dude. Leave apartment, visit downstairs neighbor, consume Gabby, uh, visit tech store, give review a free sample. All right, now we accuse G her of being evil and then we're good, right? It's genius. Are you guilty? <laughs> guilty spec call of your crimes. Call the police. All right, now we trip her. Hello, police, said Kyle. I believe I found a criminal. Rachel began to run towards the door. <laughs> On her way, she swatted Kyle's phone out of his hand. Trip her. Kyle stuck out his leg. Rachel stumbled and crashed onto the floor. But in a moment, she was on her feet, and she drew a blunt weapon seemingly out of thin air and started swinging at Kyle. Kyle, having nothing to defend himself with, was smacked repeatedly in the head. Kyle lost consciousness several times, but somehow managed to remain upright. Rachel, thinking Kyle had not been incapacitated, continued her assault. Eventually, standing upright or not, it became apparent that Kyle had been <laughs> adequately incapacitated. Rachel looked around, slightly guilty, and shuffled out the door. In the following days, Rachel disappeared from the cr country, crimes rate plummeted. Kyle was credited with cracking the case on a crime spree. Nevertheless, Rachel was never caught. Yes! We got- Oh my god, one more. What if I have my sword? Maybe I can fight her. 
and be the hero. Let's do that. Let's try that. Hopefully that's the finale. Oh my god. We might have done it, and I'm gonna be so happy because I've been playing this for a hot minute now. It's a good game, but I, after getting the same ending a billion times, it's not so great anymore. Interesting, let's try that. Maybe if I turn back time, I'll have enough time to do it. Let's try that. Wither away, shocks, shucks. All right, sit at desk, check in drawer, sort of change, back to desk, flashlight, back to desk. Back to room. Bedroom to hallway. I think I should eat Gabby before I go back in time. Consume Gabby more. Back to hallway. This is a tech store. Buy batteries with change. I don't think I'll make it in time with what I did. I did that wrong or something. Turn. Return to bedroom. Open closet. Spec with flashlight. More. More. Travel time. Yes. Am I doing it? I think I did it. So I've ate Gabby. We put on clothes. Suit of armor. We get our sword. I think we've done it. I hope this is right. I don't know. I'm scared. I, I want this to be right because I can't really think of what else to do. All right, so we have Gabby and I can defend myself. Have I wrote the questions? I have not. Back to hallway. Return to bedroom. Sit at desk. Write notes for interview. All the questions. Are you guilty? I think we did it. Back to room. Bedroom hallway. Leave apartment. Visit tech store. Give review. Because you suck. All right, let's hope this works. Let's hope this works. <sighs> All right. What? I fucking suck. I suck. I had it. I know how to do it. Oh my God. I think I got it. I'm an idiot. Okay, try that again. Oh, I suck. Return to menu. Okay, reset. Wither away, shucks. Get out of bed anyways. Sit at desk, check desk drawer. Flashlight, check dress drawer. Sort of change, back to desk. Back to room. Exit bedroom to hallway. Leave apartment. Visit downstairs neighbor, more eat her. Um, back to hallway, visit tech store. Buy batteries with change, insert it into flashlight. Back to tech shop. No, not back to tech shop. Oh crap. That fuck up already? I think I made it anyways. Ooh. Sit at desk. Write notes for interview. Back to desk. Back to room. Exit bedroom to hallway. Check lock door, float through as ghost, go inside, get Clay's with Claymore, back to room. <sighs> okay, back to hallway. We gotta eat. Am I missing anything? We got, am I dressed? I'm not dressed. Fuck, okay. Move to kitchen, open fridge, pray breakfast, eat the breakfast, return to kitchen. Return to hallway, return to bedroom, get dressed. Choose an outfit, suit of armor. Okay, I think we're ready now. I think we are ready. I think we're ready, Freddy. Is there anything else we should take just to be safe? I don't think so. Still techno gym. <laughs> no. Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay. Please let this be right. I think it is. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. Are you guilty? Rachel, are you guilty? Kyle asked through his... Kyle threw his questions on the floor and stood up and pointed at her. Rachel's eye twitched slightly. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? She smiled disingenuously. Guilty, spat Kyle, of your crimes. 
Rachel did not answer. Her eyelids both started twitching uncontrollably. Call the police. Kyle pulled out his phone and dialed the police. Hello, police, said Kyle. I believe I found a criminal. Rachel began to run towards the exit. Tripper, please let me use my sword. Started swinging at Kyle. Kyle produced, yes! Yes! Kyle produced his laser claymore and blocked her first offense as a grand fight between the two started. Blow was traded for blow, spins, flips. Rachel threw a large swing towards Kyle head, Kyle's head. He, he blocked forcefully, sending himself forwards. Kyle and Rachel found themselves inches away from each other, face to face, sword weapons crossed, and they looked at each other. Something magical happened. They fell in love. Kyle thought about all the times Rachel had smiled at him. Kyle thought about her witty, polite answers. Rachel began to think about how intelligently Kyle had prepared just to talk to her. She thought about how he lived, not magnificently, but in a small, cluttered apartment. Kyle and Rachel had slowly, insidiously, began fall been falling in love. Kyle and Rachel's lock was broken. They continued to fight back and forth, but their eyes never parted. Rachel spun around, leg out, she kicked Kyle's claymore out of his hand. She grabbed Kyle by the front of his shirt and tugged him close. Perhaps, she whispered to him, the last thing I should steal is your heart. <laughs> Oh, Rachel pet Kyle on the lips and slid out of the door, disappearing. In the following days, Rachel was not found. Many sums of money and artifacts that had been stolen from museums and banks were returned overnight. Small amounts of the sums were missing. Equal amounts were donated anonymously to homeless charities. Kyle spit Gabby back out after his fight with Rachel. She continued to be a vigilante that and stopped many crimes. After receiving a note one night under his door, Kyle took a sun vacation to a city in Europe. Although he had stated to his fans it was would be a short trip, he never returned. Slowly, Kyle fell out of the common minds. News outlets began to cover other topics. Reruns start, stopped airing. Kyle faded into obscurity. But it's rumored that a couple from the U.S. had started a family on the coast of the British Isles, and they seem... Let me make sure... They seem quite happy to not be famous anymore. The end. Kyle was famous. Yes! Ah, oh, we did it! Yes! Oh, I struggled so hard. Thank God. Oh, my God. That was... It, it felt super rewarding. I loved the ending. This was a great game. I was going to be really upset if I went through, like, all that. Like, I've been writing on my notebook, like, doing, like, different combinations. But we did it. Thank God. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. If you like videos like these, please like and subscribe. Bye! That was awesome. Let's go. All right. Boom, baby. Kyle was famous. <laughs>